and prititites underneath that with a thrust contact into under with the underlying rocks in here. I'm sorry? Oh, it's easy. Okay. We take dip in pillow lavas. Um, well, we may be able to see that over there. Um, you can tell the tops of pillow lavas. Pillow lavas are shaped like the top looks like this, and the bottom has a, a, a dip in it because what's, they float. It's a mushroom, right? But yeah. So you take the top is the the bulbous top is is the way up, right? And then you check that with sediments if you have sediments that are interlayered with that, and where we check that with the sediments in this outcrop here, at this road cut here, you can see that the lavas and the and the uh, and the sediments uh, are congruent in terms of their attitudes. So basically, that's that's how you do it. Okay. It's not as it's not as accurate as taking a uh, an attitude on a on a sedimentary rock, but, but in fact you can do quite a bit. Okay. And in fact, uh, there are places where pillow lavas are mapped as flat line, and then where we are, uh, we're actually um, just on the west side of this Timbuktu anticline in here, so the pillow lavas are dipping steeply eastward, westward, sorry, in this region here. Then you have this sheeted dike complex, you have this large plutonic complex with some inner layers of or intervening gabbros, and then apparently an antiformal structure in here of, of uh, layered gabbro, we'll see, and presumably some other stuff, and then the volcanics in over here. The dikes and the uh, pillow lavas are missing on the east side of this, what seems to be some sort of major structure as inferred in this in this restored cross section here and so and there's a lot of so-called massive dye base in here dye base where you can't really get anything uh, any kind of attitude on it at all so how do you deal with this how you deal with this uh, the way to the, the, the working hypothesis that I'm going with is the fact that that uh, the pillow lavas and volcanoclastics and that sequence may be slightly older than the intrusive rocks, including the intrusive dike, the intrusive dikes. And so they together make a dike free. Well, there may be a second set of dikes in here. We could talk about that. But there may have been some sort of bona fide traditional ophiolite complex, which has now been disrupted by this massive amounts of intrusion that you see in the central part of this complex. Would that be in back of the island arc? It would be in back or in front, depending upon which way you want to want to have your island arc uh, be facing. Okay? Uh, yeah. Question? Yes. Okay. Can you refresh my memory? What's yeah. the difference between uh, diabase and gabbro? Okay, diabase, I'm uh, sorry, is a is a hypabyssal intrusive rock. It's a rock that has, you know, cr a crystalline uh, structure or texture, but they're not as big as gabbro. It's just so it's a fine grain gabbro. So chemically the same. Chemically, allegedly the same. As basalt. As, yeah, as basalt. Okay, right. There was a question over here. <coughs> okay, right. Same definition of diabase. <coughs> That's the American ter terminology for diabase. The British terminology is dolerite. And for them, a diabase is an altered dolerite. But then you get into the French and and German literature, and they call it diabase. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. So he. So, so he's saying he thought that Gabbro was earlier and was, was early segregation of crystal. And certainly in some cases, especially um, whereas wherever one has that, when you have cumulate Gabbros, that's the case. But a lot of these Gabbros are coarse, multi-textured, static Gabbros that, that must have, have been crystallized close to the, to the margin of the, of the pluton 
and they're they're inter intruded with plagiogranites, and which are also you know irregular intrusions into these things. And their texture is quite variable. You'll see that, and you can you could, can't argue that that they are they are the result of, of crystal settling or crystal you know stratiform crystallization. And I think what we should do is, is, is go and try and see these. Are these the question is are these ophiolites super subduction? The ophiolites question of, of, of analysis geochemical. The answer is yes. Uh, they have been analyzed. Uh, the convention I think the the consensus is that they are so-called super subduction. They form over subduction zone. However, analyses you look at the the quarry over there, which is full of pillow lavas, I hope you can see that. Uh, you find island arc tholeites, uh, super subduction basalts, and mid ocean ridge basalts all occurring together. There are, <coughs> there are, there is a, one of the problems is there's a dike complex that apparently intrudes this lower contact, this exposed from Folsom through Auburn up to an area to the south of here, and that is mid-ocean ridge basalt composition. So we have all things together in here. Okay, yeah. Is there any way one can see the moho? Is there any way one can see the moho? Uh, there is no place here uh, that I know of yet where you can actually see what you would call the moho. It probably is here, and I can show you where it might be on the map. But I can't take it, take you to it, and put your finger on it right now. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be theoretically at the top of the map? Yes, indeed. Well, Which you, is you have two, you have two mohos. You have Which the so-called, you have the whole so-called petrologic moho, which is, which is this one here, which is between tectonite and olivine cumulates, and then you have the seismic moho, which is between the olivine rich rocks and the gabbros on top of that. So that's what you see in your geophysics. That's, you've got to get out of your geology, okay? okay. All right, let's put that one on there too. Sorry to give you all this so much all at once, yeah. Yeah. Are, are massive sulfides typically commonly associated with the ophiolites? Uh, massive sulfides are commonly associated with the, the ophiolites. There are massive sulfides associated with this body. We won't see them. They're also silicic tufts that are associated with this body to the southwest here about five miles. Okay, This is the Spenceville mine. It's all worked out. All you see is dumps. So it's really not worth going to. So is <laughs> Cop Copperopolis, is that an example of a sulfide? A cop I believe so, yes. Copperopolis, Copperopolis is, is Copperopolis is, uh, yes, another map of massive sulfide that's down east of Stockton. Okay, let's see, that one's...